hello saviors, and welcome to this video tutorial on the Techie 2 EX. Everyone who I've ever shown this add-on to, or told about this add-on, has been initially excited at the idea of it, but then quickly daunted and bewildered when they find that they are completely baffled at how to use it. So I've decided to make this video tutorial, as there isn't one. I mean, technically there is one, it's the only thing in the readme file, for this add-on, but there's no dialogue in it, not even written in the chat or anything like that. No spoken dialogue, no written dialogue, it's only just showing you visually, but it's the Japanese version of the add-on in that video, so it's not exactly the most helpful thing in the world. So what is Muteki 2 EX? It is an add-on that will add buff timer bars to your interface. Unfortunately, you cannot uh, customize the size of the bars, but you can choose where to put them, and you can choose what colors you want them to be uh, on an individual buff-to-buff -buff basis. Uh, so how does this work? Uh, first of all, when you have an add-on like Muteki that has an interface of its own installed, then you will get this extra button in your lower right menu here. It looks like a sheet of paper. It's the add-ons button. And if you click that, it will show you all the buttons for all of your add-ons that have their own interfaces. Um, in regards to these other two first, uh, Barrett item list sucks, don't use it, doesn't work, I'm going to uninstall it. Extended UI 2, which should have a 2 at the end of the tooltip, but it doesn't, um, is what I have used to rearrange my interface, for example, moving my quick slot bars. I will be making an, a video tutorial on that add-on as well. Hopefully it'll be a little bit less rambly than this one. Uh, Muteki 2 EX is the add-on we're going to be looking at now. And when you first install this add-on, the first thing you're going to notice is this darkened square. And everyone is always like, ah, what is this square? I don't know what this is. Why is this here? Uh, this is the area where your buff timer bars will appear. If I, for example, cast my Divine Might, then here you can see it's in the box. Or if I cast Revive, you can see it's here in the box. And you can move the box wherever you like. And there's this is it's currently set to fixed. There are two options here, this fixed or trace. Uh, trace will put the bars over your head automatically. Um, and you can unlock it here too, but you see it just pops back because it automatically traces your character's location, hence the term trace, and distance, so that it will, you know, automatically adjust as you zoom. It doesn't seem to adjust very well, because when I zoom out, you know, it goes over my face, but whatever. I don't use trace anyway, although I can see why some people might want to use trace. But I prefer it for on fixed for focusing reasons. I like to have everything all up in one place that matters. So, uh... The default layer level is set to 80. What is a layer level? Well, this determines what it will be drawn on top of or below. For example, if I open my inventory and I move the bars over, we see that it goes below the inventory. The bars do not show above. But if I change the layer level, if I raise it to, say, 800, then now the bars appear over top of the inventory. If I set this back to 80, then they're now below the inventory again. So that's what a layer level is. Everything in your interface has a layer level. Now, by default, this show gauges below specific buff time in seconds setting is set to something rather low. I don't remember exactly what it's set to, but it's not particularly high. I have it set to 6,000 so that Muteki can show buffs that are 6,000 seconds or less in duration. Um, the default number will not allow you to show long buffs like blessing, excuse me, like blessing or sacrament. So I've raised it. I initially had it set to three thousand, but that was not long enough to show hour-long buffs like, uh, excuse me, sorry, like the loot potion buff that lasts for an hour. Um, I do not recommend using Muteki for just any and every buff. Uh, I, I would recommend using it for a small handful of very important buffs 
that you need to have a visual representation of, or that would be very helpful to have a visual representation of, like for example, fortune cookies. You stack five of those, you get an EXP buff. And when it's almost expired, you pop another fortune cookie to refresh the buff to last another half an hour. But I found myself always forgetting about my fortune cookies, and so the buff would expire, and then I would have to down five of them again, and I would get very frustrated. So I have added fortune cookies to my Muteki UI so that I can get a visual representation of that buff's duration so that I can get a visual cue of when it is time to refresh it or nearing time to refresh it. Or these blessed fruits, for example, are the same thing as the fortune cookies in that regard. Um, by default, uh, Muteki will not actually show you any buffs at all. Uh, this menu is empty by default, and you have to add your buffs to Muteki in order to get them to actually show. Um, for the duration of this video, I'm going to keep the darkened box here on uh, for your sake, but normally I would turn it off by locking. See, if it's locked, then you can't move the box anywhere. The bars will still show, but the box won't. But I'll leave it unlocked for now, for uh, the sake of the tutorial. If you want to add a buff to the uh, Muteki, sorry, this video is unscripted, please forgive all the ums and whatnot. Uh, if I cast Aspersion, for example, then uh, if I left click on the buff, it will be added to Muteki. And pick it bam. Now I have Aspersion added to my Muteki, and I can see the buff duration. And it's a long one, so it's going to take a while 1781 seconds and counting. But if you have a keen eye, you might be able to see that like a pixel or two has faded away here at the end. Now, by default, every buff that you add will be this color. It's a very uncomfortable color. I don't like this color. Uh, so if we wanted to change it, then we would have to come in here and change it over here. I'll get to that in just a minute, though, because that's, because that's going to be the long part of this video. Before I get to that, uh, there are these tick boxes for each buff. There's the display icon option, where is aspersion? Here it is. Uh, if I click display icon, we see we have a dancing icon here instead of the bar. Personally, I find it a little bit obnoxious. I'm guessing maybe that's supposed to be the point so that it's easier to see, but I don't really care for it. I can, I guess I can see why some people might. Uh, what I would like to see, if the author of this add-on is watching, is a tiny little version of the icon right next to the bar. I don't care if it's squished down, I'll be able to tell what it is. That would be most welcome. Unfortunately, there is no such setting. The next option here is hide with this character, and it will hide this buff for this character, just as the name implies. Uh, the, the settings on these tick boxes are unique to each of your characters. They will all have their own individual settings for these tick boxes, but the list of buffs, the, this full list of buffs that's here in my Muteki, is shared by all of my characters. Uh, which is why I have several buffs here, like Fanaticism, for example. Uh, this is a Zealot buff, but uh, my character is not a Zealot. Well, this character is not a Zealot, but I do have a Zealot, and so she would, might like to see this buff, but actually she wouldn't anymore, because now Fanaticism lasts for half an hour. It, up until just a couple of weeks ago, that wasn't the case. Um, so I actually don't need this one anymore. Um, so I'm going to hide it. Uh, I should hide it on the other character. It doesn't actually matter for this one. But who knows, maybe it'll help with uh, processing time. So I'll hide it. Who cares? Uh, the third one is with effect. And to be perfectly honest, I have absolutely no idea what this does. I have never been able to get it to do anything that I've noticed. If anybody knows what this does or can figure out what this does, please tell me in the comments below because I would really like to know. Okay, and then removing a buff is as simple as clicking the X in the corner. It will take it out from your Muteki menu. So the last thing... Get out of here. Uh, the last thing that we need to know about is uh, changing the color tone. Um, by default, it is set to... Where is it? Uh, FFCCCC22. And for most of you, this probably makes absolutely no sense. You're probably like, this does not make sense. 
uh, but in reality it actually does make sense uh, if you know hexadecimal. You have to know how to count in hexadecimal to be able to understand this. Uh, and so I'm going to teach you how to count in hexadecimal, but before I do that, I will point out that these first two digits are the opacity. The higher this is set to, the more visible the bar will be, the, or the more opaque the bar will be. The lower this is set to, then the less visible, or the more invisible, you will, uh, that the bar will be, if you will, I mean, sorry. Um, this video is kind of all over the place, but I'm not restarting it again. I've done this like four times. Uh, the next two digits here, CC, are the amount of red in the bar. The higher that these two digits are, the more red the bar will be. The lower these two digits are, the less red the bar will be. The next two are the green. The higher that these two digits are, the more green the bar will be. And the lower these two digits are, the less green the bar will be. The last two digits are blue. The higher these two digits are, the more blue the bar will be. The lower these two digits are, the less blue the bar will be. When all of these are set to zero, the bar will be black because zero zero is no red, zero zero is no green, and zero zero is no blue. Biggity bam, no color. And if we set FF here at the beginning to zero, or zero, 00, I should say, because it always has to be two digits. You can never just put one digit. Hexadecimal demands two. Then, oh, how about that? Set it to fully visible white. That's unexpected. One, 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 one. Okay, there we go. Now the bar is invisible. Apparently, if you set it to invisible black, it is fully visible white. It goes to the exact opposite. How about that? I just learned something. So, FFCCCC22. That's the default. So, okay. How do we count in hexadecimal? How does this work in order to know what to set these to? Well, in your normal method of counting that you are familiar with, it uses what is called a base 10 system. That is to say that there are 10 digits before rolling over. And when something rolls over, then the leftmost digit is raised. So, for example, 9 rolls over to 10. 19 rolls over to 20. 29 rolls over to 30, etc., etc. 99 rolls over to 100. 999 rolls over to 1,000. 1,009 rolls over to 1,010 so on and so forth. We could be here all day. In a base 16 system, there are 16 digits before rolling over. So we add these letters after the numbers so that we can have more characters to work with, so that we can have 16 before rolling over. The first digit is 0, and that's actually the case in the base 10 as well. You might have been thinking, no, there's only 9 digits before it rolls over. No, no, there's 10. This is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. That's 10 digits, and then that rolls over to 10. In a base 16 system, our digits are 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, A, B, C, D, E, F. And then that rolls over to 10. So in a normal counting system, 10 is equal to 10. But in a base 16 counting system, 10 is actually equal to 16. Or 17 if you count 0 as 1, which computers tend to do. So we have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, A, B, C, D, E, F, and then that rolls over to 10. Now we have 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, A, T, B, T, C, T, D, T, E, T, F team. And then that rolls over to 20. 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 20A, 20B, 20C, 20D, 20E, 20F. And then that rolls over to 30. And so on and so forth until you reach the 90s. And the 90s 
uh, go 91, 92, 93, 94, 95, 96, 97, 98, 99, 90A, 90B, 90C, 90D, 90E, 90F. And then that rolls over to not 100, as you might think, but to what I'm going to call Addy. Um, one might call it AT, but uh, that would be confused with 80, 80, but I'm talking about A0 here, so I'm going to call it Addy because 80 is already taken by 80. So we have Addy, Addy 1, Addy 2, Addy 3, Addy 4, Addy 5, Addy 6, Addy 7, Addy 8, Addy 9, Addy A, Addy B, Addy C, Addy D, Addy E, Addy F. And then that rolls over to BD. BD1, BD2, BD3, BD4, BD5, BD6, BD7, BD8, BD9, BDA, BDB, BDC, BDD, BDE, BDF, and so on and so forth until we get to the FDs. And we have FD1, FD2, FD3, FD4, FD5, FD6, FD7, FD8, FD9, FDA, FDB, FDC, FDD, FDE, and then FDF is the highest one. Before that would roll over to 100. Do you see? So this is how counting in hexadecimal works. This is also just plain how counting in a base 16 system works. Um, our characters A, B, C, D, E, and F are arbitrary. They could be square, circle, x, triangle, question mark, ampersand, if we wanted them to be. But hexadecimal uses the letters because they're on a keyboard and it's sensible. It, it's sequential, right? So it makes sense to use the letters. We could also just invent wholly new characters if we wanted to. But that would be impractical because those wholly new characters don't exist on a keyboard, do they? So that's how you count in hexadecimal. And uh, that's how you determine how you want these, uh, these settings in your Muteki to be. So I don't have the list written out in front of me, but I want to say that the, the very middle most character would be 80C, I think, or 80C, no, 86, no. 88. Yeah, 80, yeah, 88, I think. I think. Because there's going to be 16 in both directions, and 8 is the middle of 16. So, yeah, 88, I think, is the middle. So, if I set this aspersion's uh, opacity to 88, and the bar is now 50% transparent and 50% visible. So, remember, 0 is transparent, and FDF is visible. So, High means more visible, low means less visible. So if I set this to, say, 30, then it's mostly invisible. Or if I set this to Addy, then it's a lot more visible. If I set this to Didi, then it's mostly visible. FDF is 100% visible. There's no transparency to it at all. Let's set the green and the blue to 0. And we see that CDC, we have a very red bar. If I set this to 88, then it is 50% red. If I set this to FDF, it is 100% red. And if I set this to 0, then it's just black. Or if I set this to, say, 15, then we've got some red here, but it's still mostly black. And this applies to the other colors as well. If I set these two digits, the green, to 15, then we have some green, but it's still mostly black. If I set it to 88, we're half halfway as green as we can be, and if I set this to FDF, then we're all the way as green as we can be. Likewise, with the blue, if I set this to 15, we've got some blue, but it's still mostly black. If I set this to 88, we're halfway to as blue as we can get, and if I set this to FDF, we are as blue as we can get. And we can combine these two, so if I set the red and the blue to 88, then we are halfway as pink as we can get. Or if I set the red to FDF and the blue to 88, then we've, we've got more red in the mix than we did before. Or if I do it the other way around, set the blue to FDF and the red to 88, then we now have more blue in the mix than we did before. You see? And let's just, for good measure, let's throw in some green at ADA and biggity-bam. We've got this actually rather pleasant 
pale baby blue. Very pale baby blue. <laughs> and uh, that's how you customize the colors on your Muteki. Uh, so I'm just going to go ahead and remove that because I don't normally use aspersion on my Muteki and I'm just going to uh, actually you know what I'm going to lock this and show you a bunch of bars together all at once. <laughs> And here we have several bars showing all at once. You see, they're all going. And you can tell which ones they are by their color or by their tiny little text if you prefer to go that way. But at that point, you might as well just look for the tiny little icons. So I, I find the color is what's the most useful about this. I can tell at a glance by just seeing the color there that a buff is active or not. Uh, normally, though, I don't actually use this many. I just have them here for your benefit so you can see all of these bars together. I used to use them all, but over time I found that uh, I didn't really need this many. Uh, so I don't use... I do use Divine Might. I do use Beak Mask. Um, I use Methadone. I don't use Modafinil. I use Fade. Don't use Prophecy. Don't use Healing Factor. Don't. Uh, yeah, I do use Arcane Energy. And I don't use Revive. Because uh, those things are just not necessary. Uh, the, uh, the timers on these do just fine for those. Because those are things that I use constantly. <sighs> okay, so uh, I think that's it. I can't think of anything else to say about Muteki. Uh, that's how you use it. That's what it does. That's what it is. And that's what I don't know about it. If anybody finds out what that with effect button does, please let me know in the comments. Uh, good luck. Have fun. And uh, install lots of add-ons. Well, maybe not lots. Install a few add-ons. They're good. Uh, also, uh, on that note, uh, you may notice that my top bar here is not shunted over to the right. Uh, that is due to an add-on that I made myself called Unshunt That Bar. Go download it. It is awesome. Uh, have a good one, everyone.